Well, hello, and welcome to another episode of Woke by Accident podcast. I am your host, Jen Washington. This is a weekly chat about socially conscious topics impacting the culture. I would like to extend my gratitude in you listening to this podcast. It means everything to me, and I hope it is clear that this subject matter is so important to me. I care about our people, our future, and making a positive change in this nation. Welcome, guys, to another episode of Woke by Accident podcast. On this episode, we will be talking about Daniel Prude, the African-American man from Rochester, New York, who was fatally injured after being in police custody. We also will talk about Breonna Taylor and Jessica Crudd, or should we say the 2020 Rachel Dolezal, and we also will observe September 11th. The body cam footage from a March 23rd incident involving Daniel Prude and the Rochester Police Department has surfaced. In the video, Daniel Prude is seen having a mental health episode. According to reports, he was acting erratically. The police officers approached him, pinned him to the ground. He reportedly stated that he had coronavirus, and they placed a spit hood over his head. So the officers pinned him to the ground, one holding his head to the pavement, while another placed a knee to his back. Shortly afterward, he stopped moving. And according to a lawsuit that was just recently filed here on September 8th, his heart stopped beating. The paramedics revived him through CPR, um, and then ultimately he was removed from life support and passed away on March 30th. In April, the Monroe County Medical Examiner concluded that Daniel Prude died by homicide as a result of asphyxiation from restraint with excited delirium and PCP used as contributing factors. So the video is really hard to watch. Seeing the officers place the knee on his back and his face facing the ground and then the officer just applying pressure and applying more pressure and you hear his cries muffled from the spit hood that he can't breathe, and it's just like really another case of this again. Since this incident, recently there have been 10 nights of protests in Rochester. Additionally, the police chief, Laron Singletary, announced that he would be retiring after 20 years on the force. There's a clip from the mayor, Lovely Warren, that I want to share where she expresses apologies toward the family. I want to first again extend my condolences to the Proof family. I've reached out to them and the local Black Lives Matter protesters to discuss Mr. Proof's life and discuss how we can create real change to address racism in all aspects of our city and our society. And looking forward to continued discussion and recognize the basic humanity of individuals who are suffering from mental health issues like Mr. Prude. Mr. Daniel Prude was failed by our police department, our mental health care system, our society, and he was failed by me. And I stand here against the advice of our corporation counsel, but I would not be who I am today had I not, if I don't stand on my own truth. I must apologize to the Proof family and to all of our community. The family of Daniel Prude has filed a civil rights lawsuit against the retiring Rochester Police Chief LeBron Singletary, the City of Rochester, and several officers are named in connection with the arrest and death of Daniel Prude. They state that Mark Vaughn, Troy Talladay, and Francisco Santiago used deadly force on Prude. 
The lawsuit further alleges that Prude's first, fourth, and fourteenth amendment rights were violated after the Rochester Police Department used excessive force. So we'll be uh, following this case concerning the lawsuit uh, so that this family can receive justice for Daniel Prude. Moving on to the Brianna Taylor case. So according to NBC, the case will be presented before a grand jury in Louisville at an undisclosed location. The Kentucky Attorney General is preparing to present evidence from the fatal shooting of Brianna Taylor as early as next week, according to sources familiar with the matter. Once the grand jury makes a decision, the Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron is expected to make a public announcement to share his office's investigative findings and the grand jury's decision on possible indictments for the three officers who fired their weapons that night. Brianna Taylor, if you are unaware, was a 26-year-old emergency room technician who was killed after midnight on March 13th when police officers broke down her door. Seeking evidence in a narcotics investigation, the target of the probe did not live at the location and no narcotics were found at the location. Jessica Crud, the George Washington University professor who lied about being black, has resigned from her position. According to CNN, this move comes one week after the university announced that she would not be teaching. So on September 3rd, Crud admitted to masquerading as a North African, African American, and Caribbean-rooted Bronx blackness throughout her adult life in a blog post. She states that she is actually white, Jewish, and from Kansas City. Harry Zayed, the editor-in-chief of Race Bader, a website where Crud had published many articles, states she only had come forward with the revelation because her deception had been discovered by others and she was about to be made public against her wishes. In the opening, I mentioned Rachel Dolezal, which a few years ago in 2015, a very similar story occurred with Rachel Dolezal, who at that time was the president of the NAACP chapter in Spokane, Washington. But she resigned over the controversy over her racial identity. It came out that she was actually white and she had been living as a black woman all this time and had represented herself as a black woman. She had a scholarship under the impression of being black, could put that she was biracial on application and things like that. So it's very similar cases, kind of odd and interesting that it's coming up again. What do we think about someone that is living their life that way under that type of lie. Back in the day, they used to call it passing when African Americans who were light enough could portray themselves as white to their benefit. And so it's interesting to see that the tables are turning and white women are or feel as though it's to their benefit to portray themselves as something other than white or black. So today, September 11, 2020, we remember and honor the lives of the nearly 3,000 individuals who lost their lives 
in the terrorist attacks over 19 years ago on September 11th. I came across a really interesting article on Politico.com where they conducted a focus group of young people who were born in 2001, either on or following September 11th. So these are the 9-11 babies, as they call them. And the article goes on to make these generational references of social media then and now and them not knowing about the financial crisis of 2008 and Barack Obama and things of that nature. But then it goes on to make this uh, correlation that these are the youngest cohort of Americans who will go to the polls this fall. We have less than 60 days, is it? 52 days, to be exact. So, um, I thought that was a very interesting way to pay tribute to 9-11 or a different perspective to look at 9-11. These were the babies. They are now adults, and they will be a big part of our decision-making in this historic election. So, I thought that was really interesting and we just want to take a moment and rest in power to those who have gone on to be with our ancestors. So at this time, we're going to go ahead and conclude this episode. I would, again, like to thank you for listening to Woke by Accident. And we would also like to invite you to follow us on our social media. On Instagram, it is Woke by Accident Podcast. And on Twitter, it is woke by. Again, we are available on all the platforms for podcasts. Please subscribe, rate, share, like, tell a friend. Uh, We do appreciate the feedback and the support. And every time you listen, we greatly appreciate it. Thanks again and take care. care.